Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, hope you've all had a great new year and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this liquid effect in Adobe Photoshop. Now I know that this seems like a very simple and easy thing to do by just using the liquify tool and that is correct, however what I'm going to be doing is showing you the settings that I use and give you some tips along the way to help you achieve the best possible liquid effect. So let's just get straight into the tutorial. Okay so first things first, you're going to need a document to work in, so I'm just going to come up to File, New, I'm going to create a new document with the width and height both at 3000 pixels and the resolution at 300 dpi and just hit ok to create that document and the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer and making sure that your foreground colour is black and your background colour is white you want to come up to filter and then come down to render and hit clouds and what this will do is just create a random generated render of a cloud texture and throughout the whole process we're going to keep duplicating the layers as we go along just so we can always go back and see the process that we've gone through so to do that I'm just going to hit command J or control J if you're on PC and quickly before we start there's actually many different ways of doing this so for example what the way I'm going to show you is I'm going to do this in black and white and then add a gradient map over the top but alternatively you could add a new layer here set the blending mode to overlay and add your own colors that you want on it or you could actually just get a photograph or an image and import that and then liquefy that. The steps that I'm about to show you and the settings that I'm using will work equally as well on either method that you choose to use. So I'm just going to show you this one method and then you can apply this with a photograph or if you want to do it with colours from the start. But yeah, to save time I'm just going to do it this way. So yeah, let's just get started. So now that we've got the duplicate, all we're going to do is come up to filter and then come down to liquefy. And making sure that you have the first tool selected, which is the forward warp tool. I've got my brush size set to 701, which is quite large, but of course this will vary depending on the size of the document that you're using. And the pressure I've got to 90 and the density I've got to 50. And these are the settings that I've experimented with and found to be the best and work best for me. I've tried it where the settings, like the pressure is less or the density is higher and it either liquefies it too much or not enough. So this is what I've found to work the best. And from here, all you're basically gonna do is start painting and sort of wiggling it around in different directions. You can get quite crazy with this because all you really want to do is try and mix it all up and ideally you want to be getting rid of the sort of cloud texture that you can still kind of see in the middle parts there and you also don't want it to get too bunched up and squashed together so say you do it all like this really quickly you see that it gets really bunched up and it's, it doesn't really look that good so you can actually do that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go quite crazy with it to get it all nice and mixed so just mix it all up nice and well doesn't matter if it's coming off and you can see like the translucent the transparent part behind it like these squares because we're going to drag it all the parts out to the edges anyway once we've mixed it all up to get rid of the um, sort of tight areas here so I'm going to speed this part up while I mix it up and then we'll start dragging it out towards the edges okay so now that you've got it all nice and mixed up you want to make sure that you can't see any see-through parts so for example this bit here on the right hand side you can see the squares behind it so if you just drag it out to the edges that gets rid of that you just want to drag some parts out as well to get rid of all the tight areas so like so get rid of all the background parts and I'm quite happy with how that looks and we've got some nice little shapes in here and some nice wacky directions so once you're happy with how that looks there's one last thing that you can do within this uh, liquify tool and that is down here where it says brush reconstruct options which this might be closed by default so just hit this little arrow to open the uh, menu and then there'll be a button here called reconstruct and if you hit this button you'll see that it says amount and it's default at 100% and basically what this is is 100% being what you've just done to the image so that's how you've liquefied it and zero being how you started so as you can see as you bring the uh, sort of timeline across you can see the timeline of what you've done basically and you can just go back and select a different part say if it looked better back here then you could select and just hit ok and then you've got it like that but I'm quite happy with how the end result actually looked in fact, let's just drop it back a little. So let's say 97. So I'm gonna hit OK on that and then hit OK again because we're happy with how this looks. And now we're just gonna duplicate this as we go along. So Command J or Control J on PC. And now we're gonna add the colors to it. So to do this, all we're gonna do is come down to the bottom of the screen where you've got the half filled circle, hit that, and then the second from the bottom will be gradient map. Just select the gradient map. And then this dialog box should open in the properties tab. And all we're gonna do is select the gradient here and this will open up the gradient editor and if you've got your own gradients that you've downloaded and installed or gradients that you've used then feel free to use those but you probably will have to adjust them slightly to make them work well with this effect because I'll show you what I'm talking about so this is one that I've created a blue and green one which you might have seen on my Instagram 
Um, and this is the cool thing about this. Once you've got the colors in it, you can actually just slide them across and completely change how the whole thing looks. So let's just say I wanted it to be more green. You could drag the green up and drag the blue down. Say you wanted it to be more blue, you could drag the green down and drag the blue up, and then it makes it obviously darker too. Or alternatively, if you wanted multiple different colors in this, it does get a bit harder to make it look good with multiple different colors, but this is a gradient that I've just thrown together to show you what I mean. So as you can see, the highlights on the left is the white, and you can see there's not very much white in this, and there's not very much white on the gradient, so that makes sense. Yellow being pretty much the primary color, and then we've got a darker shade of it. So you can see if you move these around, it drastically changes the whole composition, not the composition, sorry, the colors. Um, so yeah, you can experiment with these colors. So let me just give you an example. If I change this yellow to red or pink, it can, it changes that. So let's play around with some of these just to give you a bit of an idea of what I mean. Oh, that looks quite cool. However, it doesn't work very well with green. So let's go for a orange. And then we'll change the furthest color because this is probably going to have to be a dark color. So we want the that I think we can't see that because it's quite far down say we drag this up you see that the black starts to oop, black starts to now come through so yeah you can really just experiment with this and see what different effects you get and like I said um, if you've got gradients already installed you probably have some much nicer ones than if you've just made them yourself so yeah um, feel free to experiment with that but I'm just gonna go with the blue and green one the one that I primarily primarily use and I'm just gonna drag that up a little bit and I'm quite happy with how that looks so I'm just gonna hit OK and sorry that was my phone not yours <laughs> and from here we're just going to start adding some effects and then this is not finished by the way we still need to do a crop and rotate on it to get different compositions so if you've seen my instagram post you'll have seen that some of them actually have a slight half tone effect overlaid on the top of them and i'm going to show you how i do that but first what we need to do is select the gradient map and the liquify layer so they're both selected and i'm just going to duplicate those right click and then merge layers so now we've got this as one layer which is what we need so we're just going to duplicate this so we've got a backup and now we're going to add the halftone effect and we're actually going to need to duplicate this again to create the halftone effect so we're just going to duplicate again using command j making sure that your foreground and background color is still black and white and then you're going to come up to filter filter gallery and once this opens you're going to come down to the sketch tab hit the little arrow so it opens it up and then you'll see the halftone pattern you want to select the halftone pattern and then the size and contrast will vary, of course, depending on the size of the document that you're working in. So I'm just going to drop this down to two and the contrast, keep that around 36. I'm quite happy with how that looks. It's not too messy. It's not too over the top or maybe drop that down. Yeah, 27, that looks better actually. So I'm happy with how that looks there. And I'm just going to hit OK on that. And now what we need to do is get rid of the white so that we can see the colored version through it. So on the halftone layer, we're just going to double click on the thumbnail, which will open up the layer style tab. And if you come down to where it says blend if gray and this layer, you'll see that you've got these two sliders, you've got the dark sliders and the light sliders. So on the right hand side with the white one, we're just going to drag this down to maybe about, let's say, ooh, let's say about one, 134. No, let's say 150, 150 will do. So we're just going to hit okay on that. Happy with how that looks. And you'll see that now, if you try to do any adjustments to this, it doesn't actually get rid of the white. It just makes that it still affects the whole layer. So to fix this, we're gonna right click, come to convert to smart object, right click again, and rasterize layer. And you'll see that now if we say we brought the hue and saturation using command U, and we drop the lightness all the way down, that's only going to actually affect the parts that you can see. So all the white parts that are on there are now black, which is what we wanted. And now we can just drop the opacity of this down so we can see through it a little bit because you don't want it to be too overpowering or too obvious. So I'm happy with how that looks. And again, I'm just gonna select the both of the top layers here and duplicate those and merge them together. So merge layers. And I'm just gonna duplicate that again so we have a backup. And this is where we're gonna add the noise. Again, this is something that you may have seen on my Instagram post. So I'm just gonna come up to file, uh, sorry, filter, and then come down to noise, add noise. And once this dialog box pops open, uh, these are the settings that I've used. Uh, and they work totally fine for me. So I've got the Gaussian, the distribution set to Gaussian and then monochromatic ticks. So that just means the, the grain will be black and white rather than like RGB colors. And the amount I've got set to 9.51. And again, this will vary of course, depending on the size of the document and how big you want the grain to be. So say I drag this up, that looks a bit too over the top for me, a bit too intense. But 14, 
14, not 16. That looks all right, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. And now we're gonna to start to get different crops out of this. And that's one of the good things about this. Once you get to this stage, you can duplicate this and you can get multiple different compositions out of it. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by duplicating this. So Command J to duplicate, and then Command T to select. And I'm just gonna scale this right up. And at this point now, you can start looking around and finding parts that you think look pretty cool that you wanna use. So for example, just found one straight off the bat, the bottom left corner of the composition. Just how it all sort of flows down to the center in the middle here. I think that looks pretty cool. And I actually want that. So I'm just gonna scale it up even more. So we've got just that and then hit enter. And now you can see we've got quite a nice little liquefied. It kind of looks vintage in a way. Um, and of course you don't have to add the half tone. You don't have to add the noise, but I'm just showing you the effects that you may have seen on my Instagram. And I'm just gonna duplicate that. And now we're gonna just drag around and find another composition that we like. So this looks a bit more liquidy and maybe I want it to be a bit smaller, so. Oh, this is quite nice at the top. It's quite wavy, so maybe make it a tad bigger. And hit enter. And there you go, so now we've got two nice compositions out of one liquify effect. And if you wanted this to be a actual layer rather than it being like the full square like this, you can get the selection tool, just make a selection over the whole canvas and hit Command J, which will just basically make a duplicate of that selection. So now if you see if on your duplicate, now if you hit Command T, it's now just that, which makes it a bit easier to work in if the file's a bit big. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's how I create the, this effect. Um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. And as always, if you use this tutorial for anything and you post it online, feel free to tag me because it's always amazing to see what you guys come up with using the tutorials that I put out there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Thank you.